Hello, I'm Jill at Ingvid, and today uh, we are looking at some book recommendations um, because um, I've had a few requests from, from you, the viewers, uh, to recommend um, books that might be worth reading. Um, and so uh, what I have here on the board are one, two, three, four, five, six uh, novels, um, fiction books, uh, some written in the 19th century, some in the 20th century. Uh, three are written by men and three are written by women, just to get the, the balance right. And uh, so what I've done, I've put the, the opening line of each novel uh, to give you a, a sort of flavour of of what it sounds like. Um, so um, let's have a look then. So the first one, uh, it's just a very, very short sentence, uh, call me Ishmael. So that's a bit um, intriguing. And it's meant to be, of course, because the, the point of a first line is to make you want to carry on reading. So it should make you feel um, you, it should, you know, provoke your curiosity and make you want to read on to find out, what, you know, what's this all about. So, call me Ishmael, um, and is the first line of um, a, a novel, a very big novel, long novel called Moby Dick, uh, which you may have heard about before, and it's about a whale um, and about a ship. Uh, and the captain um, wants to hunt down a whale. Uh, he has some sort of uh, vendetta, some sort of vengeance. Uh, he sees the whale as, a, as an enemy. It's rather personal. Uh, so the captain of the ship wants to, uh, to kill the whale. Um, it's not the purpose of the trip, really but that's his secret plan. Um, so that's what the novel is all about. So Moby Dick is the name of the whale. Uh, the, uh, the, the name of the author is Herman Melville, an American novelist. And uh, the date it was published um, was 1851. Okay. So it's quite a difficult novel and very long. Um, so, uh, with all of these, you might want to watch a film version, perhaps, just to get to know the story, uh, even though sometimes a film version might play around a little bit with the story from the book, so you can't be sure it will be exactly the same. Uh, but you always have that option of seeing a film version as an easy introduction to the story, and then you might want to read the novel afterwards. Or you might prefer to read the novel first, then watch a film and see, compare in your mind uh, how similar they are, or maybe they're a bit different. So, okay, so this line, it's sort of, um, you can tell that the, the, a character in the story is telling the story. It's called me, Ishmael. And here am I telling you a story about something that happened uh, because he's one of the sailors on the ship who experiences this uh, the hunt for the whale. Uh, so he's the what you call the narrator, the person who tells the story. And you would say he's a first person narrator because it's me, I, me, first person. Um, so it's a personal account of the story. Okay, um, so that's that one. The next one, let's have a look at this opening. It was a bright, cold day in April and the clocks were striking 13. Wow, so that's a bit strange, isn't it? Again, that makes you want to read on. How, how come the clocks strike 13, is something wrong with them? Does somebody need to repair them? Um, clocks don't usually strike that number. They, they go as far as 12, don't they? And then back to one again. 
Um, so that's a bit strange. You might think, what kind of place is this? Uh, it gives you a feeling. It's a bit strange, sinister even. Um, and so this novel, it is. this isn't the date it was published. This is the title of the novel, 1984. Um, and although that date has gone by, of course, uh, when the book was written in 1949, actually, or it was published 1949, I think the novelist would be writing it in 1948. So he kind of reversed the date um, and he was making it a kind of futuristic novel, um, something happening in the future. Uh, so 1984. Um, at that time in 1948, they would think, oh, Gosh, 1984, that sounds like a long time ahead. But to us now, of course, it's a long time in the past. Um, and the novelist, uh, George Orwell, an English writer. Okay, um, And it is about a, a place where things are, are, are quite bad. The, the 13, also 13, an unlucky number. Um, it's, it's a terrible place where people are treated badly. Um, so that's a, a, a little hint in the first line that something is wrong here. Okay. Right, so moving on to this one. Um, this is quite a famous opening line. Um, it's quite complex. It's a very long sentence, but uh, I think you'll get the sense of it. Uh, it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. Okay, so because this was written quite a long time ago, 1813, um, the style of the language is much, it's quite different really, um, long sentences and must be in want of a wife, means must be in need of a wife, or must be looking for a wife. So it's a slightly old-fashioned style uh, that you have to get used to as you're reading. Um, and it's quite sophisticated the way it's put, but actually it's a kind of humour, really. Um, this novelist, uh, Jane Austen, um, is known to be very witty and humorous, uh, but the humor is in the language. You have to kind of appreciate the humor through the language, the way she writes it, the style. Okay, so it's saying, well, we all know that a single man with a lot of money uh, must must be wanting, must be looking for a wife. Well, is that true? Maybe not nowadays, maybe not then. Uh, but um, this is the kind of, um, it's suggesting the mindset, the attitudes of the people who live in this particular place in, in English society, sort of middle-class English society. Um, and it's very much the attitude of the uh, the mothers of a family of of daughters, and in those days, the only um, you know the only thing that girls would do uh, would would be to look out for a husband because they had no way of uh, earning a living or having a profession. In eighteen thirteen, um, they would be dependent on men all the way through their lives, most of them. So they would be looking out for a husband with a lot of money so that they could have a comfortable life, basically. And, and the mothers also have a strong motivation to find husbands for their daughters. So this is the kind of thing a mother in this society, oh, well, this young man has just moved into the big house. Uh, he must be rich. Um, I have five daughters. Um, oh, I hope, uh, you know, there's a good chance he might want to marry one of my daughters. 
and then that will be one less daughter to worry about. So this is a kind of attitude in the minds of the mothers, particularly in this uh, English society. Okay, so it's called Pride and Prejudice uh, because these are two of the um, attitudes that come out in the characters and in the main character who, uh, you know, she's has a kind of pride um, at first that um, isn't a very helpful attitude and she has prejudice as well, which is another unhelpful attitude. So it's a kind of human story about someone who has some faults to begin with, but she learns um, about herself and about other people during the course of the novel. Okay, and the author's name is Jane Austen. Okay. Right, next one. So we have a 20th century um, novel now. And this one, 20th century novels were often not quite as long as 19th century novels. Um, they just got a bit shorter, um, quite a lot of them. Um, I think Victorian novels tended to uh, be very, very big. But, um, at one time, they used to publish them in three volumes. Um, and then if you put a three-volume novel into one, a uh, book like a paperback, um, it's very big, might be 900 pages or more, so um, it takes a long time to read. Um, but this one, 20th century, is shorter, and the first line, Mrs Dalloway said she would buy the flowers herself. Oh, okay. And then the title is Mrs Dalloway. Um, so she's in the first line of the novel, quite rightly. It's all about her. And she said she would buy the flowers herself. So again, it's a bit intriguing. Uh, why is she buying flowers? And why herself? Who else would buy them if she didn't? Um, but then you find that she's quite a rich lady. She has servants. So she could have sent a servant out to buy the flowers, but she's decided to go out and buy them herself and you find it's for a party that she's organising. Um, so the whole novel is about the preparations for the party. Um, so that's Mrs Dalloway. The author is Virginia Woolf, and the date of publication, 1925. Okay. okay, so now we're back to 19th century again, and here's the first line. There was no possibility of taking a walk that day. Oh, so you think, oh, this is negative. It, this is what you couldn't do. So what, what are they going to do in this novel if you start off with something that you can't do? Um, does that sort of set a, a feeling for the novel? Uh, a, a novel about being restricted in some way, that you can't do this, you can't do that. Um, it's a little bit like that, I suppose. Uh, but then we find quite quickly that the people in the house uh, can't go for a walk because it's raining. Um, so that's what it is. But I think it's quite a, you know, it has other suggestions in it as well. Um, and it's written from the point of view of, well, again, it's first person narrative. So Jane Eyre is the title. Jane Eyre is the main character. And uh, this is her story. It begins when she's a child and uh, she can't go out for a walk, but she's quite happy really because she's reading a book. So she's happy to stay in the house and read the book. Um, I don't think she cares about going for a walk. Um, it, perhaps it was a good thing that she could stay in and read instead. Um, okay, so the novelist is Charlotte Bronte and the date 1847. So early Victorian novel, English again and Virginia Woolf also English 
Um, in fact, they're all English apart from Herman Melville on this list. Okay. And then finally, uh, we have um, this very famous story. And, oh, I've lost count of how many film versions there are of this, um, A Christmas Carol. Um, so many different versions, a lot of American ones. Um, so this starts, uh, Marley was dead to begin with. Uh, there is no doubt whatever about that. So that's interesting. It's the beginning of the story. And Marley was dead to begin with. So gosh, that's what sort of beginning to a story is that, that somebody's dead? Um, who, who are the characters going to be? Uh, and there is no doubt whatever about that. Why, why would you need to say there's no doubt? Because it is a bit um, doubtful. Uh, because, um, well, Marley does appear in the story um, as a ghost, actually. So he is dead, but he's a ghost. So, um, you know, that's a bit of a problem for the main character. Um, so, A Christmas Carol, so it's a Christmas story. Uh, Charles Dickens, and uh, Christmas is such an important time for um, Charles Dickens and for Victorians in general, a very popular time um, with trees and presents and all that sort of thing and the family getting together. Um, so there we are. That was written in 1843. Um, so um, some of these are, bo books are easier to read than others. So I think uh, the Jane Austen is quite difficult until you get used to the style and start to see the humour in it. Um, Moby Dick is very long, um, but it's an adventure story, really. So it's quite exciting. Um, George Orwell, that's a kind of, well, almost science fiction, really. Um, what you call a dystopian novel about a society where things are very bad, uh, the opposite of utopian, okay, dystopian, right. Um, but quite straightforward, I think, to read, um, not too difficult in, in style. Uh, Mrs. Dalloway, I think that's quite straightforward as well, really. Um, it's a bit psychological. It's all about what's going on in her life and in her mind. Um, Jane Eyre, I think that's a good story. It's quite readable, not too difficult. And uh, Charles Dickens as well, this one. Um, it's a kind of long, short story, quite easy to read, I would say. The language isn't too difficult. So, um, uh, so I hope those six recommendations are um, helpful for you. Um, so, um, you might like to also have a look at my, um, um, my video on, uh, book reading in general, uh, which, um, is a, a kind of group discussion with some other people. If you haven't seen that already, um, have a look at that. And that's also talking about different books and each person is recommending one or more books that they've read and that they've enjoyed. So I think that will give you plenty of ideas for any any books that you'd like to read. So, okay, there we are then. Thank you for watching. And uh, I hope to see you again soon. Okay, bye for now.